everyone. I'm going to talk to you today about the natural regions of Kentucky as part of the Master Naturalist program. And I know that uh, if you've traveled from one end of our state to the other, you notice that there is a lot of different landscapes that you're viewing through the windshield. So uh, just so you know a little bit about my background, I was fortunate enough to manage the state nature preserve system for 31 years. And so I had the good fortune to be paid to travel around the state and look after a wonderful suite of nature preserves and natural areas and keep an eye on a lot of really cool plants and animals, not all of which are rare, but uh, you know, they're just stunningly beautiful. And um, I think that uh, the treasures that are out there can be found not only on some of these great natural areas, but you know, in your local community, it just got to get outside and, and go find them. And so hopefully this will help you interpret where to go to see some of the rare ones. Of the physiographic provinces that are in the southeast, Kentucky has three of those. The, the coastal plain, the interior low plateaus, and the Appalachian highlands. Within these are the natural regions that I mentioned earlier, and there are nine of those. These areas within them share a general similarity in their geology and topography and the hydrology and the soils and the climate and the vegetation that makes them rather unique. When you're talking about geology, the substrates influence species distribution and composition. And that's, you know, you've got things that grow on acid soils of sandstone der derivatives, and you have things that grow on limestone soils, which are more basic. The karst and cave distribution in the state of Kentucky is somewhat uh, unique and important to take into consideration because we have um, limestone that throughout the state where it is found has been sculpted through the erosion and dissolution uh, by water. And so we have some really interesting formations of springs in addition to caves and sinkholes. So there, there's more to this and karst is really plays a big role in the distribution of a number of species. The lack of surface water means that species have to adapt to other uh, means of survival. And topography is really critical as well. We have mountains in the southeastern part of the state and we have low wetlands in the western part of the state. So looking at the topography you're going to have a, an influence on species distribution from that as well. And rainfall has a, a key role to play in how plants are distributed in this in this state as well. Or snow, if you want to think about the top of Black Mountain. The uh, amount of snowfall there uh, is, is unrivaled in the state. <laughs> the amount of uh, annual precipitation that we find in other regions of, of the state also have a role to play in replenishing water in our wetlands, for example and temperature. If you are a gardener, you know something about uh, how many good days there are in the year for growing things and the last day of frost and the first day of frost in the fall. So the temperature differences in the state are varied and the species that occur there as well. So we're giving you all these definitions and another one to throw at you is natural communities. And that are, uh, is defined basically as distinct groups of plants and animals that repeat across the landscape in a, in a recognizable pattern. Wherever these similar environmental conditions are met that they can coalesce in that way. There are a number of factors that shape natural communities. The geology, is it sandstone, is it limestone that the, the, the species are growing on, perhaps shale? The soil, what is the soil's depth? What is the pH of that soil? Are they soils nutrient rich or poor? Uh, what kind of drainage is there? Is it really dry soil? Is it really mucky, heavy soil that uh, just holds on to moisture? The uh, hydrology, is it saturated? Does it flood frequently? Uh, those are important factors as well. And the landscape position, the aspect and slope also has uh, influence on how we see species distributed across the landscape. And this illustration is, is a really good one to just talk about uh, natural communities that are affected by uh, north face uh, conditions or south face conditions. The north face tend to be cooler and, and perhaps more, uh, more uh, 
mesic, and then if you're on a south face where the sun strikes most of the day, it'll tend to be drier, and uh, uh, that has an influence to play. Also with regards to how water moves in those instances, uh, so drainage patterns, erosion, all of that has to uh, come into play when you're looking at the topography and aspect. And of course there are regional influences on the flora that we have here in Kentucky. And um, the uh, northern temperate forest uh, is recognized as well as the midwestern prairie, the coastal plain, and uh, the Appalachian Mountains have all had an influence on species movement into the state and establishment. This next picture is, a, is it an eye-opening one in my book. This is a map that shows Kentucky prior to settlement by Europeans and you can see the vast areas of dark green that are the forest forested cover, the grasslands that are uh, situated in the in the south central part of the state and, the, and notice all of the wetlands. That's really the key when I show you this next image which shows Kentucky now and you can see that we have lost most of the wetlands that were there. Uh, one percent of uh, grasslands are still found in the state. Just one percent or even less to be honest with you. And we have lost about 80 percent or more of the wetlands that were in this state. And so that has had a drastic uh, impact on what is still here to see in a natural state. So we'll go there to those wetlands that are disappearing rapidly. And the first is uh, the Coastal Plain Province. And that has to do with um, the Mississippi and Ohio River floodplains. They're characterized by having nearly level, poorly drained lowlands. It's the youngest region in our state in terms of geologic time. The ocean covered this area as recently as 70 million years ago. I know that's seems like a long time ago, but when you consider how old the planet is, it's really kind of a blink of an eye. The East Gulf Coastal Plain is uh, characterized by seeps and uh, sphagnum, which is just uh, very acidic, and there are species of plants that are found there that you wouldn't find uh, in other locations, again, because of saturated soils and distribution of these species on the landscape, including uh, uh, cottonmouth snakes, which uh, really seem to like the, the hills and uh, bluffs above these, uh, these wetlands in the Gulf Coastal Plain. The interior low pl plateaus province has uh, the majority of the, the uh, natural regions that uh, we're going to talk about today that is uh, a lot of habitat that is bluffs and, and the plateaus, they are, uh, most, of, most of this land is um, hilly or rolling, and so that's kind of a characteristic of the interior low plateaus province. We're still dealing with some floodplains here within this uh, province, and these are the ones that are along the Ohio River and up to Owensboro. These are bottomland forest community types. They're found on flat bottomlands joining large streams or rivers, such as the Ohio River. The her herbaceous layer is hy hydrophytic vegetation, which means that it's uh, very much uh, saturated. Um, a lot of forbs and sedges uh, in, in this kind of habitat. The soil is poorly drained, and the water table is above or at the surface much of the year. The Shawnee Hills is a very fascinating part of the state. The, uh, age of the sandstone is Pennsylvanian and it's massive and so there are a lot of bluffs that characterize portions of this region. A common natural community type found within this is the uh, acidic xeric forest or woodland and there are a number of species that are common to the canopy and a lot of times because it's so dry in these settings with the soil almost non-existent or very close to the surface uh, with the bedrock that you have um, species that can really withstand some punishment in regards to uh, moisture and nutrients. So chestnut oaks, post oak, blackjack oak, species like that that can really uh, tolerate those kind of conditions are, are most common. And then uh, you'll find uh, things like poverty, grass, um, 
a lot of lichens and moss that grow on these sandstone rocks. Uh, again, it, it's a place where you can find glades. In this instance, they would be sandstone glades. And the example that we have here is the sandstone glade for the Shawnee Hills. And you can see that there are uh, a lot of lichens in this picture. There's a lot of rock outcropping, uh, minimal soil. And where there is soil, you'll see that the grasses have gotten themselves established. And many times in these situations, the grasses are just annual grasses that really um, just come up and, uh, and flower and seed and then and, and die back. It, there's really, it'd be really hard to sustain a perennial root system in these very thin soils with such dry conditions as are found in these sandstone glades. The Highland Rim is the next natural region that we're going to talk about. And um, this is where the big prairie remnants are, are located in the state. Uh, the big barrens area is, is part of this system and is historically fires would have swept through this whole area because there's not a lot of surface streams. And if you look on a map, it's a big horseshoe area uh, on the map that uh, if you look at a map that talks about the hydrology, you'll see that there's hardly a surface stream within that. So this is an area that fire would have swept across without a lot of interference from stream systems to slow it down or stop it. So this area burned the most in the state of Kentucky and that kept um, a lot of the grasslands uh, intact and functional because there wasn't a lot of trees to shade out all of the, um, the, the, shade, the uh, prairie loving species. A very unique natural community within this region is limestone uh, flat rock glades. And this is a very uh, interesting uh, setup. There's a place we have uh, protected down in Simpson County that has uh, just basically a limestone pavement. And within that, there are soil pockets that have very, very rare species in them, including the uh, necklace glade crest shown here as the white flower and the uh, the beautiful little magenta flower, which is called Flower of an Hour. It opens up for a brief period of time every day, and then uh, the flower petals close back up. And these species, again, just live in these little soil pockets where there's a lot of uh, really harsh conditions to grow in. It's, it's saturated in the winter and then baked dry in the summertime. The next region is the knobs. And this is a very distinctive area in our state. If you're traveling out of the bluegrass region, you have to go through the knobs in uh, <laughs> any direction but north. <laughs> so uh, this is a distinctive region. The, the hills are somewhat conical in, uh, in shape. Uh, there's ridge systems that intervene between these cones that you see. Um, it's, it's a very distinct region. And um, the, the, the fact that the area has had gone through such erosion, uh, it, it's made those distinctive cones or little, little volcano hills, if you will, that you see. And it was uh, basically from stream erosion. This was a flat plateau and through the force of, of water eroding all of this, the uh, resistant sandstone cap rock that's still present at the top of the cone uh, wore away at a different uh, rate than the underlying shales. And, uh, and silt stones and, and uh, rocks that could not resist the erosion uh, forces. And so uh, it, it shows very plainly these conical shapes all across the region. And it's, it just looks like little uh, sentinels uh, encircling the bluegrass region. The typical community type that you would see in the knobs is more of an oak pine community. Uh, the, the oak species uh, again, tend to be the ones that can withstand the drier conditions on ridges and, and, uh, and uh, rocky slopes. And, uh, and the Virginia pine is the, is the predominant pine in many of these systems. There are, however, some beautiful mesic forests represented in the north-facing slopes and coves of the, of the Knobs region. And uh, one of those is at uh, Vernon Douglas State Nature Preserve near Elizabethtown, and if you ever have a chance, it's a, it's a beautiful place to go and, and see really massive uh, old growth trees. So that leaves us the bluegrass region, and that is uh, level lands to gently rolling to uh, the entrenched cliff-lined rivers uh, and streams that we see. Uh, the, the, uh, the tributaries to the Kentucky River have uh, cut down through um, 
the uh, the bedrock and and make these amazing uh, little gorges along the, the the stretch of the Kentucky River Palisades. The area has uh, some of the richest soils and has been uh, settled the longest. So we have the least uh, good examples in this region of the state just because there's been so much disturbance for so very long with settlement by Europeans. The Kentucky River Palisades that stretches for 100 miles is one of the most distinct features that you will see in the region of the, of the inner bluegrass. And um, in, a, in many instances, it is the last area that has been developed because it's so rugged and rough and, and rocky with the cliffs that some places here have some of the only intact forests that you'll find for the inner bluegrass of any extent. The oldest bedrock in the state is also exposed here in the Palisades region. The Ordovician limestones are 450 million years in age, and they're found basically uh, at the, at the waterline uh, in, in the Palisades. There are a number of interesting community types, but a common one that's very rich and that most people go hiking in is the calcareous mesophytic forest, and that is characterized by ashes and oaks and sugar maple with buckeye bitternut, uh, hickories, black walnuts as well, and a rich uh, flora on the forest floor, which is what really appeals to so many people in the springtime in this part of the state. You can see a wide variety of beautiful spring wildflowers. The outer bluegrass region is uh, bumps into the knobs, and it is underlain by Ordovician and Silurian age limestones and uh, there is a little bit more moderate relief than the, the rolling uh, to level areas that you see in um, the inner bluegrass region. Our last province, physiographic province, is the Appalachian Highlands and that is the eastern portion of the state and it is constituted by the uh, Appalachian Plateaus and um, the Cumberland Mountains. And the Appalachian Plateaus are characterized by being really deeply eroded plateaus with steep hills and, and, and narrow stream valleys. And so as you travel towards the Red River Gorge, um, you'll see where uh, it's flat on the top, but there's deeply dissected uh, river streams and, and, and corridors that uh, are characteristic of that. Additionally, the sandstones here are Pennsylvanian, and uh, they are very characteristic of what you'd see in the Red River Gorge, for example. Uh, massive sandstone, beautiful arches, uh, again, with very narrow stream valleys in between. The Cumberland Mountains are some of the most unique biodiversity in our state because of the altitude that you're at and also the fact that it's influenced by being part of the Appalachian Mountain chain. And the species there that you would encounter are typical of southern and northern Appalachian uh, systems. So it's kind of, our Cumberland Mountains are central in the Appalachian chain and, um, and they reflect that. So you can get some southern species and some northern ones mixing along there. Included in this region are Pine, Cumberland, and Black Mountains. Black Mountain is the highest elevation and it definitely ind is indicated by some of the uh, natural communities that you will see at those elevations. There are species that nest there that we don't have anywhere else in the state uh, that will nest because uh, they've got to fly onto a, a more northern climate. But uh, for example, Blackburnian warblers will, will nest on the top of Black Mountain. Uh, otherwise, you won't find them nesting. They pass through our state during migration, but they don't, they don't nest here. But conditions are met on the top of this mountain. And it definitely serves as a migration corridor uh, the backbone of these mountains provides good flying conditions and uh, I've been up there viewing uh, hawks during migration and lo and behold here comes a monarch butterfly. So it's, it's used by uh, flying creatures as well as earthbound uh, the elk and the bear that have uh, moved through our state are they move along that that mountain chain so it's it's a great corridor for species movement.